Jai Mataji, dear friends, today I am going to talk about uh, fuel oil distribution system on ships. A, a layout is needed. So suppose as a chief engineer, now, when you take on board oil, it is called bunkering. The whole process is called bunkering. So when uh, I see that my fuel oil is going to finish and I need some fuel oil, I call the company and company tell me, okay, this this place, a barge is going to come and it is going to deliver fuel oil on board ship. So what is happening? My ship is on port over here. On the sea side, a barge comes. A small ship, it has got fuel oil for me. It connects its hose to the uh, to the pipeline that I have got on the main manifold, which is called bunker manifold. It is connected over there with flanges and everything. That connection is made. And then the oil is transferred into my storage tanks. I can have two tanks, I can have three tanks, I can have four tanks. So over there, I store my fuel oil, which has come from the barge. Over here, I've got steaming steam coils, <coughs> sorry, which goes throughout the tank and steam in, steam out. Basically, we maintain a temperature of around 40 degrees centigrade over here. But we definitely have to ensure that temperature always over here is more than cloud point and pore point. If it is less than pore point, the oil will not flow. And if it is less than cloud point, then this filter will get choked. From here, this pump fuel oil transfer pump, it is a screw pump, it takes suction. And through the filter, oil goes over here from the settling tank. Again over here, it, the steam in and steam out. This tank, the fuel oil over here is heated to up to 80 degree centigrade temperature. Now why it is called settling tank? Because over here all the dirt particles, dirty things, even water which is heavier than oil settles down. Once it settles down, we have got a drain over here. We open the drain and we can keep draining the water and the sediments which are settled down from over here. So it's a kind of separation that is taking place. But that has happened. Then after that, we take this oil through a heavy fuel oil purifier. This is a heavy fuel oil purifier pump. It goes into a purifier. Now this purifier is a works on the principle of centrifugal force in which it is rotating at a very high RPM, say up to 9000 RPM. So if a mass is, if a different density objects will have different centrifugal force. So fuel oil have, will have a different centrifugal force and water molecules will have different centrifugal force. Since water molecules are heavier, it is something like this. So fuel oil purifier, oil comes in over here, settles on over here, since it is rotating by 9000 rpm. Water moves out because it has got a higher density, oil stays in. That is where final separation between oil and water takes place after this. And even if there are some sediments, hard molecules or such, that also goes out because it has got higher density. So, they move out and oil goes over here into the service tank. Over there, fine. Now, over here it is further heated and the temperature is increased up to 90 degrees centigrade. Now, when I call it service tank, you must understand. Service tank is that it is ready for giving service to the engine. From here, through fuel oil pumps for circulation. These are called circulating fuel oil pumps. Okay, the pressure is increased to up to 7 bars and then it is sent to a heater where the temperature from 90 degree centigrade is increased up to 130 degree centigrade so that we have 13 CST viscosity when it reaches the main engine fuel oil pump. Now say this is unit number 1, unit number 1 fuel pump is there and unit number 1 fuel valves are over here. So it goes to the fuel pump and from there to the fuel valve. And when this pump has got a roller, it has got a cam. So when this cam shaft with engine starts rotating, this fuel pump starts pumping at a very high pressure into the fuel wall. The fuel wall itself opens at 380 bar pressure. So this fuel pump, because of the fuel cam mechanism, develops a pressure more than 380 bars. Then only this oil from the fuel wall through the fuel nozzles gets into the combustion chamber in finally, finally atomized form. Clear guys? And this is what I wanted you guys to know. Thank you.